forever you are God. Bless you, Lord, you are holy. You are holy. And forever you are God. And forever you are God. We bless you, Lord, you are holy. You are holy. Father, we give you glory, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Praise God. You may be seated. Tonight I'll be speaking for just 30 minutes, max 40 minutes, just to add a few things to what God's servant has shared. I mean, when we receive a word of this magnitude, I believe it's better we just go home and pray. Because what he dropped here was heavy. And trust me, there are many things that were encapsulated in that message that we take several listening to be able to receive. Several listening, trust me. Spoke from depths of encounters, spoke from depths of process and intimacy, and it will take a lot for your spirit to receive it. Glory to God. So take time to listen to the message again. It will really bless you. And because of the depth he's gone to share from tonight, I just want to give you a few points um, to help you appropriate the life and the power of the Spirit. Because um, the ministry is to complement each other. So I'm not going the way of revival anymore, I'm not going the way of intimacy. I'll just outline points that you need to be conscious of so that you know how to administer the graces that you have received. Glory to God. And so I'll give you nine points that you need in order to impact your world. Because it's a world changers conference. And it's important for you to know that it is the burden of God for us to affect our world. I tell my people, everything God does on a generic scale is global. And if you read your Bible, you are going to find it. Every time God addresses the church, the mandate of God is usually a global mandate and so every one of us have the capacity to affect our world on a global scale but you see there are protocols and there are credentials you must have in order to do that it is not just something you wish it is something you work out that God desires it does not mean you will arrive there there are rudiments of the spirit that must be applied in order for you to become a global entity and a global blessing. Glory to God. If you read your Bible, for example, when we look at the gospel that God committed to us for our word, the gospel was given for a global mandate. In Matthew chapter 28 from verse 18, Jesus was speaking to them and he said, Go into all the world. All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And verse 19, he said, Go into all the nations go into all the nations and disciple them the word nations used here is the word ethnos and ethnos means a group of people of like minds and same interest like a family so this is where you begin the gospel from from family from pair groups any organization or simple group that has same value system and like minds jesus says to begin here but he didn't stop here in matthew 24 verse 14 he said this gospel this same gospel 
of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. So the word used in 28 verse 19 is ethnos, but the word used in 28 verse 14 is oikomin. And there Jesus was talking about empires and organized institutions. So you are expected to take the gospel from your family into organized institutions and empires. And so at one level, God expects your light to affect your family, your friends, your peer group. At another level, God expects your light to affect your organization. So you go into the banking world, you go into the media world, you go into the academia. So it's from one level to another. And then you go to Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And Jesus speaking again, he said, this gospel must be preached in all the worlds. The word, word used there is the word for cosmos. It means the whole earth. So that thing that began from family level to institutional level, God expects it to affect the whole earth. And God did not stop there. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, the Bible said, The Father gave Jesus to die for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil age. That is generation. So God is expecting our lives to impact our families, our friends, but over and above that, to begin to impact institutions and organizations. And then over and above that, to begin to impact the whole earth. And then over and above that, to begin to impact a whole dispensation sensation and a whole generation and so if you are in a quiet bond and you think what you are doing in your family you have achieved so much you have not scaled up to God's expectation this is why we have the conference called world changers at the level of world changers you are not just changing your family you are not just changing institution you are impacting the whole earth and the goal of this conference is to see that your life becomes relevant and you make impact at a global level. So I'm laying this foundation to help your consciousness that the idea behind the impartation is not to enjoy the euphoria. The idea behind the message is not to feel a sensation. The idea behind everything happening here is to equip you so that you begin to affect your world. And so if you have attended one World Changers Conference, two World Changers Conference, three World Changers Conference, your presence has become a liability if you have not begun to affect your world. The goal is not to come for the conference. The goal is beyond coming for the conference, become a blessing to your generation. Glory to God. Because if you don't have the right mindset, you will not be able to appropriate everything God is doing. I saw the weight of God's glory that descended here, and it will really be unfortunate if after 12 months, you are not doing anything that's affecting a Bible, let alone affecting Nigeria, let alone affecting your generation, then you have not received anything. And in order for you to do that, I want to show you a few things to be mindful of so that you learn to appropriate grace through these channels. Because by all means, you will affect your generation. I said you will affect your generation. Glory to Jesus. Now, in order to impact your world, there are a few rudiments like I have mentioned. And so I'll just pick them one after the other. I'm keeping it very calm so that I can give you points and then you go, right? Glory to God. So there are a few points you need to be mindful of. Number one, you must be empowered. And I believe that's basically what Reverend did here a moment ago. If you are not empowered, you cannot affect your world. And I tell you why. It takes enablement of the spirit for you to be able to impact any sphere. And that's important because, number one, your potentials will be in it, except as the Holy Ghost amplifies them. Every one of us is heavily gifted, but they are in crude state. The one who gave the gift is the one that will cooperate with you to empower you in order to give expression to it and affect your world. And then that you are expressing your gift is not even a guarantee that you will affect your world because there will be oppositions. And opposition ranges from men to institutions to policies to demons and to devils. And so you must have empowerment. This is why after Jesus trained his disciples, he said, don't go out with lecture notes. I know you can go and tell them, I was the one with him in Galilee. You saw me when we went for a marriage in Canaan. He said, that cannot affect your world. In Luke 24, 49, he said, tarry until you are endued with power from on high. 
And so the first key that makes you become a world changer is the key of power. If you don't have power, no matter how much you wish it, you will not manifest it. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it says, Not many days from now you shall receive the Holy Ghost and power, and you shall be witnesses unto me. From where? Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. It takes power to be a world changer. He appeared to them in Matthew 28 verse 18. He said, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now you can go into all the nations. So if you are not empowered, you cannot affect your world. And I tell you, there are many people wishing to affect their world, but they are handicapped when the reality of affecting a generation is called to the scene. And Reverend took time to deal with life in the spirit, which is one of the basis for spiritual empowerment. He said the Holy Ghost comes upon you and then you are empowered. Everything he was teaching us here from being filled with the Spirit, from the cry of the Spirit, from the leading of the Spirit and on and on are all channels to the empowerments of the Holy Spirit. But there are two other empowerments of the Holy Ghost. When you read the book of the Acts of the Apostles, you are going to wonder how fishermen were able to affect not just their world but their generation. And not, not just their generation but generations after. They showed us three channels of empowerment. One of it is the Holy Spirit, the infilling of the Holy Ghost. The second is the name of Jesus and the third is the preaching of the gospel. Because when they wanted to go out, out of zeal, they met the Sanhedrin. They arrested them, flogged them and suddenly their boldness depleted. And they now realize this thing is more than boldness. And in Acts chapter 4 verse 26 to 30, the Bible said they returned to their own company. And they lifted up their voices and cried and said, Lord, behold their threatenings. Verse 28, he said, grant that by stretching forth your hand, you may impart us with the spirit of boldness and signs and wonders might be done in the name of thy holy child. And the Bible said the place where they were was shaking and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. So you find three things there. Number one, they said they wanted to preach with boldness. Number two, they said in the name of Jesus, signs and wonders should be done. And number three, they said the baptism, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. So the power that changes the world comes from the preaching of the gospel or from faith in the name of Jesus or from the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. If you want to affect your world, these three things will become cardinal. But unfortunately, many don't know the gospel, neither do they preach it. Unfortunately, many don't know the name of Jesus, neither do they affirm it. And unfortunately, many are not empowered by the Holy Spirit. If I have time tomorrow, I will deal with that. So let me leave it. But the first point for empowerment at a global scale, for changing the world at a global scale, scale is for you to be empowered. Ask yourself an honest question. Am I truly empowered? If the chips are down, do I know what to do to create a change? Listen, I was preaching intelligently until death hit my family. That was when I discovered that this thing is not about talking eloquently. It's about having power to create change. Every two years, somebody must die. In fact, it was consistent for the month of March. Somebody must go down. At that point, I knew titles are not enough. At that point, I knew eloquence is not enough. I needed empowerment. That empowerment was what stopped death, and that empowerment was what announced me to the, to the world. So it's not about how oratorially powerful you are. It's about the substance of power that is in your spirit. And when you have it, even if there are a billion people, you cannot be lost. Your flair will always be there. I'm telling you, you can be an apostle, a thousand apostles can gather. But when you come, your difference will be clear. There can be a thousand entrepreneurs. When you show up, your own difference must be clear. You can't be lost in the crowd. Power brings distinction because it's the ability to create change. You don't have power, you can't create change. This is why for you to be a world changer, you must find out what is the secret of power. And you must have it. And thank God, he made it available to us generously. So the first weapon of a world changer is the weapon of power. The second weapon of a world changer is the weapon of vision. You must have a definite message. The Bible said when the trumpet makes an unusual sound, who will prepare for battle? 
See, all this copy and paste can take you nowhere. You must study until something is revealed to you. In Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1, he said, I will stand upon my watch and I will wait to see what he will say to me. And he said, write the vision. Make it plain upon tables that he might run that reads it. So many don't have anything for their generation because they've not seen anything. And because they've not seen anything, their life is shallow. Their life is so ordinary. Their life, they can easily be replaced. What makes you irreplaceable is the uniqueness of the sound that you produce. And everybody who wants to be a world changer must have a message for his generation. This is one of the reasons we tarry. This is one of the reasons we wait on the Lord. The scriptures I quoted for you from the beginning, Jesus told them, this gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the world. So it's the gospel that goes to all the world. And it is the gospel that takes you to all the world. That means you ride on the wings of your message to your world. So if you don't have a message, there is nothing that will carry you. People are not interested in your face. They are interested in what you carry. They are interested in what you have to offer. And so anybody who wants to affect his generation must have a message that the generation requires. If you don't have a message that your generation needs, you cannot affect your generation. Your message precedes you. If you study your Bible, the Bible said that they have filled Jerusalem with their doctrine. So you can't deny their presence. The message preceded them. And so their presence became inevitable. You cannot refuse them from participating in the equation. You need a message. Sir, you need a message. And God has a message for every one of us to bring to our generation. The problem is that many have not waited on the mountains of encounter to receive their message. I will wait. Moses came, he said, say to Pharaoh, let my people go that they may serve me. That was all. It's enough. You don't need to preach a thousand things. You don't need to communicate on a thousand things. Just stay on the one given to you. It may look simple. That is why it's unique. God knows what your generation needs and he will put it in your spirit. Are you following this? But for you to have a message, you must wait to receive. He mentioned something here very powerful. And any preacher you see making impact, and I'm not talking to preachers, I'm talking to everybody in every sphere of life. But he referred to preachers in particular. He said, we don't get messages from reading the Bible. The word of the Lord is sent to you. So your ability to catch it is your key to imparting your word. And I tell people, the word is Catalambano. Things are flying in the spirit. As we are talking now, radio waves are passing here. It is the one who has the antenna that can catch it. So if you want to impart your word, keep your antenna sharp. Make sure you catch something that your generation needs because you will be recognized in the order of your message. It's your message that defines your order to your generation. See, that's why the devil has made the world so busy so that many will be distracted. And I'm telling you that many people have no antenna to pick anything. To, in one month, they go to 30 birthday parties. They go to 12 marriages. And they sit around gossiping with people, talking what does not matter. When will you download something? Even if you are working on 5G, download takes time. Especially if what you are downloading has weight. Those of us who download heavy content, we know that heavy content takes time to download. You can't be downloading something that kings will look for. You can't be downloading something that nations will look for. And you think it's something you are strolling and it will download. It doesn't work like that. Paul said, when it pleased the Father to reveal the Son in me, I conferred not with flesh and blood. I went to the mountains of Arabia. He went there and hid for a season. And the message came to him. If you can't hide, you can't pick anything. And if you can't pick anything, sir, you'll be a slave in your generation. Those who make changes are those who have unique sounds for their generation. Imagine how busy people are. You think people will wait to hear you if you have nothing to offer. There's no time. Ask yourself, how many times have you waited on somebody for five minutes on the internet? That thing he's saying must first of all arrest you. Because there's no time. You listen to something for five seconds. If it doesn't make any sense to you, you are off. And because you are off, you will never click on that thing again. That means you don't have too many chances. That's why you must get it right the first time. You want to change your world, carry a unique sound. You are in the business world, carry a unique sound. 
You are in the academic world, carry a unique sound. You are in ministry, carry a unique sound. It is your sound that will noise you abroad. And that is what God will use to create a change at a global level. Number three, you must have values. 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 When you don't have value, you will water down your message. Imagine if you saw me in a nightclub dancing. And then I show up, they say the apostle has come. You come with excitement when you... Is this the apostle? <laughs> no. If this is the one, I won't listen. You will walk away. That means what substantiates your message is the values you communicate. That is why Jesus, when Jesus taught them, many times he advocated for values as the foundation for their communications. And you will read your Bible, you will find it. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 5, he said, The meek shall inherit the earth, not the talkers. So no matter how sound your message is, if there's no meekness in you, you can't possess the earth. It lets you know that what really affects a people and a generation are the value systems that you advance. The meek shall inherit the earth, not the powerful preacher, not the guy with the best brand. It is the meek. And that is why, see, whether in the kingdom or out of the kingdom, you find these value systems. Why do you think people patronize certain things at certain level, no matter the cost? It's because of things like this. I flew to Qatar the other time. Everybody from the air hostess will smile with you from the beginning of the flight to the end. They treated you like a king. The moment we got in, they, they, they brought a, a menu and they are talking to you so politely. They are suggesting to you what you can start with and all of that. And you thought maybe it's because you are coming. It was a seven hours flight. They were that nice and polite to the end of the flight. Anytime you call them, they come with a smile. Hello, sir. How can I help you? Sometimes you just want to call them. And you think it's just about the air hostess. The moment you, we entered the airport, first of all, the airport was like a, a, a mini heaven. The moment you enter the airport, everybody's smiling with you. Welcome. Welcome. In fact, I wanted to go to a lounge. The person that was attending to me told me, well, that lounge may be, is too far from my gate. The gate where I will cut the connecting flight. So he will suggest I take a train to the next lounge. And he called somebody to walk me in case I miss my way with all the signs. And the person walking me was talking politely, suggesting to me about how the nation is, what the nation holds for. And all of that is not part of our salary. But they are trained to sustain meekness and courtesy. And I went to the lounge, sat down, somebody came to me, would you like anything to drink, sir? The next time I wanted to fly, that route was longer, but I said I will use it. Meanwhile, you, you are still in a kiosk and every customer that comes, you are fighting with them. Come over there if you know what, now your business be that. You will go nowhere. Yes, you are a vulcanizer, you are patching tire. And from patching tire, you have 30 enemies every day. If you like, go, another person go, come. You will never impact your world. No value system. He said the meek shall inherit the earth. Listen, thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost that fell here, but there are channels. You may be very powerful, yet rot in obscurity. That's why there are many preachers raising the dead. Nobody cares if they are dead. There are many businessmen who can solve every problem in the world, but nobody cares about their intelligence. Because your first encounter with them, they will already insult you. The meek shall inherit the earth. That's not all. In Matthew or John 13 verse 33 to 35, Jesus was speaking about love. He said, it is through love that the world will know you are my disciple. I thought the world will know we are his disciple by raising the dead, by raising cripples. Even magicians do some of those things. He said, the way the world will recognize that you are my disciples is not just by power. Power is a sign for those that believe. But those who are disciples, it will show that beyond the power they have, they have learned the character of the Spirit. And he said, the summation of the character of the Spirit is the manifestation of love. 
it is in love that they will know you are my disciple. I'm showing you why we come to church, receive prophecy, receive impartation, start businesses, we go nowhere. Because there are no value systems. Matthew 5, 13, you are the light of the world. A city set upon a hill cannot be hid. You are the sort of the earth. He speaks about morality. You want to affect your world, your standard must be well defined. You can't be corrupt by everything that comes around and you will lose your originality. The whole idea behind immorality is mixture so that you lose your originality. But check the Bible. Everybody that affected their world sustained the virtue of purity. Daniel 1 verse 8, the Bible said they refused to defy themselves by the portion of the king's meat. Genesis 39 verse 9, I will not do this evil by sinning against God. My master have not withheld anything from me but you only. At the end of the day, all of them became global entities. The Bible says, come out from among them. Touch not the unclean thing. They that bear the vessels of God must be holy. He said, in a great house, there are many, many vessels. He says, some are unto honor, some are unto dishonor. What makes you an honorable vessel? It's not whether you are made of gold, silver, wood, or hay. He said, if a man purges himself. So a generation that is defied cannot make impact. And this is why the devil is flashing every content of immorality to corrupt us. So that the ability to create change will go down. Peter said, abstain fleshly lust that war against your soul. So your capacity to create change is depleted when your purity is affected. Values. You want to change your world? You must advance values. Be known for values. Let it be said that if it is that man, his products are original. Because that's why many business can't thrive. I went somewhere some years ago to buy something. I've forgotten exactly now. And I asked. They cut the price and I said, no. Why is this so expensive? The person said, the other shops, they sell at this price. And the price they cut was five times lower than the one he was giving me. And I was wondering, why are you so bold to show me another shop? He said, I know what I'm selling. And everybody in this place know what I said. If you buy what they give you, you can take it anywhere in the world. I wanted to buy gold in Dubai. They told me there are no fake goods here. If you like, bring it back after five years. We will give you your money back and it will appreciate. And take it anywhere. If they check it, they will know that this is real. Because of originality, because of purity, it has value anywhere in the world. Anywhere. And so when a man is defied, he loses the capacity to affect his world. I'm telling you, see, it's good to have a message, but make sure your message is pure. Make sure your lifestyle is pure. Value is what substantiates your gift and your message. You want to be a world changer, you will fight this battle with all your life. Because this is warfare. I'm telling you, this is warfare. Many started where they became defied along the way. He started doing the business, suddenly he appeared slow. He added corruption. And he, he became a fast for a season. After a while, everything shuts down. He started ministry, he looked slow. He decided to start faking things. After a while, he shuts down. The devil is smart. Don't make the mistake of thinking he's foolish. If he sees that the weight of what you carry will affect your world, he will suggest fast, fast pace for you. But that fast pace will come with corruption. When Jesus was announced, this is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased, the devil knows this one will shake the world. You know what he said? He didn't argue with him. You can go ahead and affect the world, but turn these stones to bread. He wanted to add error to him. I don't want to stop you from doing what you want to do, but I will add error. You are a pastor, sleep around. We will keep it a secret. When you come up, you can still preach powerful message. You are a businessman, buy fake things, mix it with good ones. You will still sell. A time will come when you will go to a level where you cannot succeed that way. Because what you do will be proved. Thank you, sir. Value system. Listen, don't allow anything to defy you. Because you may succeed at some level, but there are certain levels where the standards must be vetted. And at that level, you can't cross. It's not at every level that poor value survive. That is why you must fight to build it now, if your vision is to affect the world. Number four, sharpen and market your giftings. 
The Bible said in Proverbs 18:16, it says, A man's gift maketh room for him and causes him to stand among kings. Every one of us here have a gift. The problem is that some people's giftings are in crude state. That is why they can't go far. And trust me, to sharpen your gift, it must go through pressure. I studied chemistry. When crude oil is gotten, it is almost useless. But the moment it is refined, more than 90 products can come out of it. And each of those products sold individually is more expensive than the crude. There is a temperature where petrol comes out. There's a temperature where diesel comes out. There's a temperature where bitumen comes out. There is a temperature where liquefied natural gas comes out. But all of those things are at very serious temperatures. Some come out at 130 degrees Celsius. That is pressure. The reason many people's gifts are crude is because they can't go through the pressure. So you have a gift of marketing, but you need to serve under somebody for four years. And in those four years, the person will give you hell. Meanwhile, you need to be there to learn the marketing so that you sharpen what you carry. But they will not undergo that process. They back out. And that gift remains un unrefined. And their life is an average life for the rest of their life. Like Ephraim, that the Bible said is baked. When it becomes hot, they pull out. And that is why they will have no value. Somebody said he, he is called into ministry and he cannot go through the rigor of prayer and fasting. When they are fasting, they say, come home, my brother. This thing, heaven helps those who help themselves. And he keeps eating until the people he taught in foundation school grow, become global apostles, and he starts attending their church. And even in that church, he can't graduate from foundation school. And then you are wondering what went wrong. He can't survive pressure. Every gift that is sharpened is sharpened under pressure. And so anybody who is a world changer must embrace pressure for a season because that is the only way to sharpen the giftings that God gave you. And then when your gift is now sharp, you must master the art of marketing it. If you don't know how to present what you have, you are in trouble. Joseph was in prison. When the butler was released, he told him, please talk to the king about me. Although the butler forgot him for two years, but a day came, he remembered. If Joseph didn't tell him, remember me, he wouldn't have remembered. He wouldn't even have thought that there was a need, that he needed such thing. But the man was wise. It took two years, but the marketing worked. And the butler said, oh, I have sinned. There was a man two years ago when you threw us into prison. He narrated our dream. He ex explained our dream and everything came as you said. And the king said, bring him. All of a sudden, the man came out as a prisoner and became a prime minister the same day. Because he sharpened his gift and he mastered how to market it. Some of you have giftings, you have not sharpened it. Some of you have sharpened your gift, but you don't know how to market it. When you should speak, you are quiet. When you should stand, you are sitting. That is why you are where you are. See, these things are moments. Though. Sometimes somebody is passing, the Holy Ghost say, greet him. He has taught you meekness for 15 years. This greeting will communicate something that that person has never heard. But you kept quiet, the person passed. That is your future going. I'm telling you. You come to a place, they are looking for somebody who will just coordinate a service for five minutes or an event for ten minutes. They say, sorry, we don't have money. You say, get out. I won't do it. Ah, you are not discerning. That five minutes can translate to the next 50 years of service. But many don't know how to market their gifts. And that's why they are where they are. I'm not saying merchandise your gift. I'm saying market your gift. Market your gift means give it the needed visibility so that you can come into relevance in order to impact your generation. It's different from merchandising your gift. Merchandising your gift is to put money on sacred things. That is not the way of God. But giving visibility to what you have is important. Five or six years ago, the Holy Ghost told me, put your messages online. I didn't know what he was saying. On my birthday, two people called me, sir, these messages, somebody put one of your clips on one Eastern platform and the thing has gone viral. Another minister saw me and said, Kai, this thing you are preaching, people need to hear it. I now reluctantly told one of my boys, okay, put it online. The guy put it on Telegram. In 
I think in seven days I forgot it. I had invitation from 17 nations. My life changed in one week just because the message was put in the right place. There are people who preach better, but they don't have wisdom on how to give visibility to what they have. And so the Holy Ghost will give you wisdom so that visibility can be given. Even Jesus, the Bible said, he returned in the power of the Spirit. But that's not enough. He said his fame went abroad. If his fame does not go abroad, the power of the Spirit will be useless. So you must have the spiritual intelligence taking advantage of moments of the Spirit to know when to project what God has given to you. It takes a lot of wisdom. Joseph did it. The Holy Ghost did it for Jesus Christ. And you must take advantage of all the leading of the Holy Ghost to know how to project what you have so that you can be a blessing to your generation. You want to be a world changer? There are protocols. There are rudiments. And these things are concerted. Follow it and see how your life will change for the better. You will be so amazed what God will do with you. So amazed. You know what some of these big companies do? They wait for those who have raw gifts and raw talent. When they produce something, they buy it at a cheap rate and they market it because they have platform. And the value of that thing multiplies by many quotients. And you see somebody who designed something, they bought it for a billion dollar. After three months, the value of that is now $50 billion. That's one of the intelligence of impact and influence. Knowing how to project what God has given to you. Please hear me. Don't allow this African syndrome or witchcraft that is practiced in Africa where they try to keep people's confidence by telling them it's ambition, ruin what you have. There are certain things that you don't do at certain times. You will never do them again. You will see people who started preaching at 17, traveling from campus to campus at 20. They are telling other people who are 25 that they are in a hurry. Is that a true message? Is that not? See, when people advise you, go and check their history. A man who is a millionaire at 15, at 20, is telling you that you are, you are ambitious at 30. You don't know. That is not an advice. That's witchcraft. So when people advise you, go back to when they were your age. Find out what they are doing. I've seen many people who were doing what I'm doing now when they were 10 years younger than me. Yet they are telling me I'm ambitious. I know that that advice is not from heaven. It's witchcraft and it is a syndrome in Africa. You want to make impact, follow the Holy Ghost. Discern your moments and take advantage. I'm not saying cut corners. I'm not saying run from process. That's not what I'm saying. Follow your process, but design your moments. Most of the advice in Africa is born out of witchcraft and insecurity. I came to discover by experience. People who traveled, do, did traveling ministry as if they couldn't breathe. When they were far younger than me, come to tell me that I'm ambitious. And I'm 10 years older than they were when they were traveling as I'm traveling. I said, Kai. Thank you, but I won't take this advice. If I don't need to go, the Holy Ghost will tell me. Me too, I have the Holy Ghost. And there are many meetings I didn't receive signal. I stopped. I didn't go. I'm not traveling to gain anything, but we need to impact our generation. We will not be here for eternity. My name is not Ancient of Days. I am Michael Oroko. Ancient of Days is in heaven. I am, my destiny is calibrated into time. At the age of 12, Jesus was already impacting people in the, in the temple. At 30, he blew the world upside down. And then somebody is telling you that, calm down. What have you even done? You have not achieved anything. They say you are, you are ambitious. Check your counterpart in the world. We are trying to, to talk to people in an auditorium. People who are 10 years younger than us in the world are filling stadiums in different nations and moving them to hell. And you gather people and move them to heaven and they are telling you stories. You must learn how to sharpen your gift. Give it visibility by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost and the allowance of the Holy Ghost until you begin to make impact. Don't become complacent and redundant. That's the problem with many Africans. They think process is mediocrity. They think process is procrastination. And they are 40. They are still waiting on God. Meanwhile, Jesus finished his ministry at 33 years. That's why we can't change our world. They wake up at 60. That's when they want to do what they want to do. And their life is finished. 
You want to change your world? Times and seasons are important. Know what to do with your gift while you have time. Follow process but discern your moments. Let me give you two more as I shut down. Structure and order. No gift prospers without structure and order. Go and check the ministry of Jesus Christ. Every time people came to see Jesus, they went through Philip and Nathaniel. Philip, tell it Nathaniel. You don't bump into him. Every time people needed to see Jesus, there was a protocol. Every time Jesus went to pray, there was Peter, James, and John. When Jesus is not around, there is a Peter who is addressing the people. There was order. There was structure. There was administration. When the food was finished, in John chapter 6, it was Philip that went to get bread from the young boy. In John chapter 12, when the Greek came, it was Philip that told Nathaniel. So there's a protocol. Nothing was done without structure. Money was kept with Judas. Many people want to affect their world and everything is spontaneous, including every weekly service, including everyday business routine. How can you change your world like that? See, the people of the world, the Bible said they are in their generation wiser. You go to a primary school, primary school has a very systematic operation from curriculum to operations. You have games master, disciplinary master in primary school. But you come to a kingdom movement and there is no structure. We say, we are following the leading of the Holy Ghost. Is that how they did it in the Acts of the Apostles? Let me show you how the Apostles operated. Number one, in the Acts of the Apostles, they had a financial structure. Acts chapter 4, verse 34 to 36. The Bible said, every resource they brought, they brought it to the Apostles' feet. And then even distribution was made. There was none amongst them that lacked. That's financial administration. When they needed to share food, Acts chapter 6, from verse 1 to 3, in verse 3 in particular, the apostle said, Select from among you men of honest report who we shall put in charge of these things. It wasn't everybody that was, Okay, give this person, give that person. There was order. And in that multitude, they chose seven men. That means if you are not part of those men, sit down as touching food, don't make any contribution. They delegated it. And they said concerning themselves in verse 4, we will give ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the world. That's how to take your word. If there's no structure, you go nowhere. So there has to be training structure, financial structure, administrative structure, operational structure. We started our ministry immediately. God said, open seven directorates who will handle the major aspects of the ministry. So we had directorate of finance, directorate of legal services, Directorate of Operations, Directorate of Administration, Directorate of Missions and Missions and Evangelism, Directorate of Innovations. So that things will be done in order. He said, let everything be done in order. You cannot gather the harvest without structure. Somebody must be accountable for something. So if you want to affect your world, spontaneous operation won't take you far. At the beginning, they can be allowed. But as you grow, you must bring administration to the operations of the spirit. That is the sign that you are able to handle much. Because God does not want the harvest to waste. And if there is no structure, the harvest must waste. So even God himself will not let you do much except as you have structure. Very simple nuggets. But these are the keys to great impact. Find out those who are making great impact around the world. These things are not lacking in their lives. And finally, passion, focus, and resilience. Anything that kills your passion has destroyed you. The fuel for continuous impact is sustained passion. And the way you sustain your passion is by maintaining your focus. Because absence of focus diffuses passion. The Lord taught me many years ago. We go for revival meeting. People catch fire. As they are coming back, somebody speaks about a seasonal movie. And they say they want to watch season one. And they watch season one till 12. 
and the fire dies after six weeks of watching season 12. What keeps your passion is your focus. That's why focus is important. Jesus said, if your eye be single, your whole body will be filled with light. So your intensity will be maintained so long as your focus is kept. And so what the devil is doing is to diverge our focus so that our passion can be destroyed. And if our passion is destroyed, our ability to push the vision is truncated. Focus and then resilience. When you are focused, you converge your energy. So anything that hits you down, you can stand again. I'm telling you, most people who are falling, they enjoy the message of God most. But there was, there was divergence. Their eyes are not single. A story was told in the book of 1 Kings 20 verse 40. He said, my Lord gave me a servant to keep. He said, but as I was busy here and there, as I was busy here and there, I lost him. When you are everywhere, you will lose what God has committed to your hands. But when you keep your focus, even if you fall, you will rise up again. Because there will always be residual energy for you to bounce back. It's not about how much God is giving you. It's about how well you can bring administration to what God is giving you. And many lack administration. Because they don't have focus, they lose their passion. And because they don't have focus, they lack resilience. Anything can throw them down. If you will change your word, listen to me, sir. If you fall seven times, rise up seven times. Because on this journey, you will fall many times. So the record is not that you didn't fall. The record is that every time you fail, you bounce back. And you bounce back stronger, better, wiser, and more skillful to do what you are doing. Bounce back. That's how you change your world. Those who are changing their world, they didn't, it's not like they never fell. They fell many times. But they rose up again. But the key to rising up is knowing how to manage what God has given to you. And the way to manage it is to build a culture of focus. So that while you are standing, your passion is intense. And in case you fall, there will be residual energy for you to bounce back. The Bible said concerning Jesus in John 2.19, 2.17, it said, The zeal of my father's house have consumed me. Jesus was speaking. He said, I must do the work of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no one walketh. That means he galvanized all his energy during the day and deployed it. You can't say you want to change your world and you are all over the place. You are, go you are not going far. Have you not seen planes that make the longest journeys? They always walk with a compass. They are on a course till they arrive. No plane deviates from its course. In order to make the journey, to arrive and to arrive in record time, there is a compass. If you are flying, sometimes you click on your screen, the 3D screen, you will see the route from the beginning of the journey to the end. And if you have time to watch it, the plane will maintain it until it arrives destination. That is how they keep to time and that's how they arrive. I saw a competition that was organized for a tortoise and a rat. A very simple race. The rat took off in a few seconds, arrived almost at the end, and turned back, and turned left, and turned right. The tortoise was taking one step at a time. He never shook. Do you know the tortoise finished the race? Till today, the rat is still in the track. And then people are talking, Oh God, where are you? Are these things working? They are working. You don't know the laws. There are rules that regulate impact. There are rules. So don't envy anybody. You have the capacity to change your world. The problem is that you are not following the rudiments. It has nothing to do with your age. It has nothing to do with your sex. It has nothing to do with where you came from. It has everything to do with your disalignment from the laws that govern impact. If you follow those laws, you too can make impact. Where I come from in Benue, more than 70% of the people are civil servants. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but I'm saying that most of them don't think beyond their job description. In fact, it is rare to see anybody rise up and say, I want to change my world, whether in business or in ministry or whatever. Either you are a police officer or you are a banker or you are a lecturer, which are very noble professions, except that it zeroes your 35 years into your job description. 
and when you are tired they retire you and I told myself can we make it from here God said you can if you follow the laws if you follow the rules in my family I'm the first that spoke in tongues they told me oh before you become a global minister you must be at least five generations I didn't have them so I said well my life began from the resurrection of Christ so my first generation is Jesus my second generation is the Holy Ghost my third generation is God the Father because that was all I had you are not disadvantaged regardless of your age go and read the Bible people at 17 were national figures David is one of them you can become a global phenomenon at 17 the Bible said even in the family of David he was neglected when Samuel came to anoint the sons of Jesse they forgot David so you can be neglected even in your family yet you become a global figure it has to do with principles protocols and rudiments listen in this conference you have been exposed to rich teachings rich atmospheres rich impartations don't waste it as you leave this conference this time make up your mind i will not return back next year except as i have found my sound as i have found my vision as i have found my message and i will give my all to it at least let a quiet bond know that i'm around at least let it be known in uyo that a new entrepreneur has risen at least let it be known in uyo that a new preacher has risen at least let it be known in uyo that a new academician has risen at least let it be known in uyo that a new media giant has risen and you will see the way your life will become a blessing to your generation anybody can make impact sir i discovered it and you are here you are 40 years old you, you say eh, there's no job in this in this land what do we do you have not waited you wait you will pick your sound and i pray for you <laughs> You know, Reverend Nuntia took us somewhere. I, I don't want to tamper with what he has done. But please, when you receive, there are channels of administration. I tell people, all of the spiritual engagements are not for the euphoria. They are for deliberate things. And only those who are deliberate can make a difference. Place your hand on your head and say, Lord, inspire me for the next season. The next one minute, talk to the Lord. 90% of your problem is here. As far as impact is concerned, 90% of your problem is here. The devil has used the eye gate, the ear gate, and the skin gate to trouble here. So there's chaos here. That's why you can't go forward. Inspire me, Lord, to affect my generation. If this is all I came to tell you, I played my part. There are value systems that need to be imparted. There are visions that need to be imparted. There are graces that need to be imparted. There are dimensions that need to be imparted. Lord, inspire me. Thank you, Father. Now, let me pray for you. Just keep your hand on your head. Don't, don't be in a hurry. I want you to be sensitive. Be sensitive like somebody who is about to receive something. Because that's also part of the problem. Be sensitive like someone who is about to receive something. I want to ask the Lord to touch somebody tangibly. Tangibly, you will feel the touch of God. You will feel it that God has touched you. Some of you, your mind will open. And you will just know what you should do. Some of you, the anointing of God will drop on you. You will feel the tangibility. 
Some of you, instructions will come to you like arrows. You will pick them like bullets come into your mind. For the few of you that will be anointed, I will lay hands on you because you are in my, in my tribe. You are in my tribe. Because there is an apostolic unction that will come on some of you. So ushers, it's not violent, but there are three people I'm looking for. Apart from others who will receive instructions and visions and all of that. Give me those three people. Let me put something on them. Father, this is the hour. 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 He sent his word, he lighted upon Jacob. And anyone who is hungry, this is your time. This is the hour. Take that grace. My God. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. So let it flow right here, right now. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Help us. Let it flow, let it flow. So let it flow right here, right now. As the river flows, as the river flows, He begins to bring every death into life. It's a life-giving river. So let it flow right here, right now. As the river flows, as the river flows, He begins to bring every death into life. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living waters. Out of my belly shall flow. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living waters. One minute. I'm out of here. Some of you, your soul has been injured. Your soul. No matter how you try to focus, you can't. Even when you lock yourself in a room, you distract yourself. It's an injury. And the way God heals the injury of the soul is by the cloud of his presence. He brings his presence and then he restores. The psalmist said, thou restoreth my soul. Restoration of soul is different from renewal. Restoration means the damage of the soul is reconstructed. Can you lift your two hands? There are three of you listening to me now. You have a global mandate. A global mandate. You have been stagnated for too long. Too long. I came to cry. As one helped of God, I came to cry. I came to cry. The very presence of God that reconfigures, that restores, that metamorphosis. Pakete heria, paragata, sadina, kareto. Let that presence descend on you like an envelope. Let it descend like an envelope. Rivers, rivers of living waters. Ia, ia, e. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living waters. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living waters. Let it flow, let it flow, so let it flow right here, right now. Let it flow, 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 let it flow.